Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. Now, if you look to your left, you can see Buckingham Palace. That's where the King and Queen of England live. Oh, look over there! The flag is up. That means the King is home. This is so exciting! Oh, I love it! And the weather in England is beautiful. Hello, boys and girls. It's Poppy and Esther. Ah, oh, we're in England. We're in England, in London at the moment. We are touring different types of palaces and castles, and we've got a tour guide. She's really nice. We are learning so much because it's a walking tour. We get to walk everywhere. We've been walking a few kilometers, but that's the only way to see everything really, really well and stop and admire all the big structures. And take so many photos. Oh, it's so awesome. We've also been on the bus right at the top and we can sit and see the whole city. It is very cold up there, but it's a lot of fun. Yes. Ooh, ooh, wait, wait, she's going to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, paying attention, please. Let's cross the road because it is now time to watch the changing of the guard. Follow me. Oh, how exciting. We might get to see some horses. I think so. That's going to be nice. Ooh, I've got my camera ready. And we're going to get closer to the palace. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Before we watch the changing of the guards, we have two shout outs. We do too. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. The first one is from Ari. Ari is five years old. And we met him at a church. It was so much fun. Hello, Ari. Yes, it was awesome. We loved meeting him and he also plays the piano. We were lucky enough to hear and see him do that. And it was so well done. Yes, I can't play anything. Keep playing, Ari. It's awesome. Now... Ari actually sent Esther and I an email with a photo of one of my crafts. Yes, so he made the flowers from Poppy's glitter box. And they look absolutely awesome. I'm so proud of you. I loved it. So if you want to see Ari's photo and meet him, you can go to our blog. There's a link below or go to our website at ggstorylibrary.com.au and you will see it under children's stories. Thank you, Ari. Thank you for enjoying the stories and listening. We love making them for you. Our other shout out is for Hannah, who is five years old, and her brother Ezra. And they live here in Brisbane, Australia, like us. That's right. And, oh, you should have seen what they sent us. Hannah did a little fundraising for Gigi Kid Stories and she made bracelets and sold them and she sent us $50. Oh, thank you so much, Hannah. You are helping all these children to learn more about Jesus and we are going to make so many more stories because of you. And she also sent us beautiful bracelets with our names. One for Auntie Nina, one for Poppy and one for me. We put them on straight away and they fit perfectly. We love them. We also loved your photos, your colouring and your letters. They made our day. Thank you so much again, Hannah and Ezra. We're glad you're enjoying the podcast. And that you're learning more about Jesus, like your letter said. Thank you so much for writing to us. You are both amazing. Wow, this Buckingham Palace is quite big. And I think it's got gold inside. I love the gates. Very fancy. I've never seen castles like this. No, we don't have them in Australia, do we? I don't think so. Not like this. <gasps> Wasn't there a castle in the Bible? Oh, like a palace? Yes. Yeah, there were quite a few palaces in the Bible. <gasps> but there was one grand, magnificent one that had never been seen before. And that was King Solomon's. I've heard of him. 
His dad was a king too. King David? Yeah. Well, I have a story about him that my friend Ashley wrote. Do you want to listen <gasps> to it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We can do it straight after we see the changing of the guard. What do you think? Yes, let's do it. After we have a picnic. And that was the changing of the guard. Now we are going to Hyde Park for a lovely little picnic. Oh, that was fantastic! Oh, yes, I loved it. It was so impressive. Oh, and I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. Oh, I want to go to the park, sit under a big tree and read you the story. And sometimes you can see squirrels. Oh, that'll be nice. Oh, can you tell me the story now while we walk? Oh, yes, I can tell you the story now as we walk. All right, stay close to me and let's follow the tour guide. Solomon's Special Request by Ashley Price Solomon! Nathan the prophet called out. Young Solomon was in the woods playing with his friends. They were trying on heavy armour and pretending they were in battle with real swords and shields. Solomon put down his helmet when he heard the sound of his name. Here I am! Solomon, it's time for you to be anointed the new king of Israel. Nathan the prophet shouted happily. Solomon ran to where Nathan was standing with a donkey. When the little grey donkey saw Solomon, he made a funny sound. Solomon smiled and held out his hand. The donkey moved closer so Solomon could pat its soft head and ears. Nathan then helped Solomon get up onto the donkey. Solomon sat very still while Nathan gently tied a rope which he would use to lead the donkey. Solomon looked down at his friends on the ground. They were smiling at him. And when Nathan began to lead the donkey, Solomon's friend ran along beside, trying to keep up. Solomon listened to the hoofs of the donkey go clip-clop on the stony path beneath them. Where are we going? Solomon asked. We are travelling to Gihon, the prophet Nathan said with a smile. The woods where Solomon and his friends had been playing was soon behind them, and they began to enter a city. As they entered the city, Zadok, the priest, joined the little procession. As they travelled along, lots of people began to follow behind them. Everyone was talking excitedly, wanting to know what was going on. When they finally reached the place called Gihon, Nathan the prophet helped Solomon get down from the donkey. All the people and Solomon's friend crowded around him, and Zadok, the priest, brought out a horn of oil. Solomon knelt down on his knees. Zadok poured the oil onto Solomon's head and said, Solomon, God has made you the new king of Israel. A trumpet sounded and all the people standing by played their instruments and sang praises to God. God save King Solomon, they exclaimed. Solomon felt very honored that God would want him to be the next king of Israel. Solomon's father, King David, was very old now and would not be king for much longer. Solomon remembered how King David loved God with all his heart and he knew that he wanted to love God too. So while everybody sang praises and played their instruments, the new King Solomon bowed his head. He prayed a prayer in his heart that God would help him be a good king to the people. A few years passed and Solomon had been a loyal king. Solomon slowly walked through the courtyard of his palace. He was exhausted after a long day of ruling the people. He had answered their questions the best he could and he had tried to treat everyone equally with kindness. Now he was tired after talking so much and doing his kingly duties. Solomon walked through his palace and into his bedroom. He smiled gratefully as he looked at his bed, which he wanted to lie down on. But first he would say his prayers to God, like he always did. King Solomon loved God a lot. He knelt down on the mat beside his bed and closed his eyes to pray. He thanked God for the day that he had had. Then he got into bed and went to sleep. That night, as Solomon slept, God appeared to him in a dream. Solomon, what do you want me to give you? Solomon answered, Lord, you have made me king over your people, but I am like a little child. There are so many things I do not know. Please give me a kind heart and wisdom to know right from wrong. 
God was happy to give Solomon what he had asked for. God said, Because you have asked for wisdom and not riches, I will give you the wisdom and kindness you have asked for. You will be the wisest man who ever lived and who ever will live, and I will give you more than this. I will even give you things that you have not asked for. I will give you more riches and honor than any king as long as you live. Solomon, if you walk in my ways and keep my commandments just as your father David did, I will give you a long life. When Solomon woke up the next morning, he thought about the dream God had just given him. He was overjoyed. He looked at the window and saw the sun rising over the mountain tops. Solomon sang out his praises to God. He felt very honored that God would give him riches. However, Solomon was more thankful that God would give him wisdom to rule the people. Solomon knew that he needed God to help him be a wise king to Israel. Just like King Solomon, we need God to help us be wise. We need His help so we can know right from wrong. And the wonderful thing is that God is asking you the same question He asked Solomon all those years ago. God wants to do something for you as well. So next time you kneel beside your bed to pray, what will you ask God to do for you? Will you ask Him to make you the best soccer player in your team? Or the best piano player in your class? While these things might be nice, let's instead ask Jesus to give us the wisdom to make good decisions just like King Solomon. Wow! I loved that story! Me too! He is so wise! God gave him so much wisdom and I think we should do the same. Ask Jesus to give us wisdom all the time to make good choices. I like it! All right, everyone, put your picnic blankets out. Now, pull out your cameras in case we see some little creatures like squirrels. Oh, I've got my camera ready. Yes, okay, boys and girls, that's all from us. Till next time. Bye. Hmm, I wonder if I can catch a squirrel. <laughs> and don't forget, girls, you are Gigi, gorgeous in God's image. And boys, you are also Gigi, great in God's image. <laughs>